welcome everyone to the Ails and Fails Twitch stream. Uh, today we are debuting something that uh, lots of you have been asking about. Lots of you have been writing in and saying, hey, why don't you and John have a dedicated show for your chats? And, uh, you know, I wrote back, I, I waited at the post office very early in the morning um, to make sure that those pieces of mail were certified. And uh, I wrote back saying, hey, it's starting up, it's starting soon, just just hold on, please stop sending me mail. And here it is, this is uh, Taproom Tales with John and Ailes, uh, episode one, even though I'm specifically not numbering this because at some point I will have to actually remember what episode number it is. And so it'll just be the episode number for that particular date. Uh, today being, what is it, December the 2nd. Welcome in... Uh, how are you doing, John? I guess I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it does it does feel nice to be a, a regular and not just a guest now, I guess, now that I have this show, you know. I do remember the consternation that you had with all of the viewer mail that you were receiving. And yeah. How many, how many requests? Uh, there, there was I definitely a large number of requests uh, i don't know if you received any of those uh, and it was also just difficult getting you to fully sign on to the show i know that you do a lot of other uh programs and, and have other commitments so it was nice to actually get it to pen and paper get it notarized at the local ups store and, and now yeah. now we have this yeah i appreciate you you know contacting my agent you know I, my schedule is pretty busy as it is so you know, I do appreciate you, you know, they were able to find a spot where, you know, I was able to you know, appear on the show. And so it's great that it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think um, I think we, we made it work and, and I think our viewers are very thankful for this. Um, now, uh, all that being said, uh, the format of the show is actually going to be quite similar to what uh, our viewers remember. We'll be streaming a game. And for a long time, it'll probably be Elden Ring simply because it's the type of game where we can just sit down and mess around and at the same time chat. Of course, that is that can potentially change. We may at some point go back to Eorzea. Uh, not too many people have been writing in about that for some reason. Um, so, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the main objective here will be simply to have a cozy chat. Uh, we'll probably discuss some of... Uh, the ongoings of the world as well as ongoings of things that we have been watching here and there uh, yeah so without uh, without further ado let's let's go ahead and switch to to the live scene and and for this for this show we'll probably use my alternate scene I, I think let's uh, yeah maybe let's leave it there um, let me go ahead and shut down the music And let me go increase the volume on the Elden Ring. Um, oh, and I think one thing that people may have been shocked about as I was starting this is why, why am I not drinking? I'm already seeing all these tweets about why is Ailes not drinking yet. And uh, to that, I have to say, I, I just had a nice warm cup of coffee. And I really hate uh, having the taste of coffee whenever I'm drinking beer especially if I'm drinking a coffee stout. So uh, I will be drinking in a bit. Please don't uh, don't uh, think that you tuned into the wrong channel. We will be there shortly. And yeah, I think, uh, I think a lot of people were concerned because, um, you know, if, if one day Aelwolf said, hey, I quit cold turkey, I'm not drinking anymore, then uh, it wouldn't be ales and fails anymore. It would just be fails. Yeah, I guess it would just be. Why would anybody tune into a show about failure? Uh, <clears throat> that would be uh, anathema, as some people say. Uh, but uh, anyways, let's uh, let's go back to the land between. So, what have you been up to in this uh, in this particular uh, game, John? Uh, so the last thing that I was doing is I was trying to fight that uh, boss. I think it was like a, a wolf man or something like that they they were like in a small temple by the beach and it was the last one that you had actually fought 
Oh, you mean the Leonidas something or other castle yeah. from Castle Morn? Uh, did you actually beat that uh, character? That surly no, I character? Don't. I don't think I did. Oh. Well, uh, I guess give it a shot. I'm certainly be I'm certainly down to help if you need it, though I somehow doubt that you would need my my support. Well, I haven't been having the greatest time against them, so let's see if I can reach you. Right here, I'm trying to remember my controls. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Oh man, I'm so annoyed by the Twitch app. I have it installed on like my ancient Android tablet and now it's not working. Every single time that I turn on my tablet, it just freezes up. That's cumbersome. Well, what, do you, what, is, what are you using your Twitch app for? Well, I'm trying to tune into the stream. Oh, I see. Tree catacombs. I remember having uh, gone off my map, off of the map of Limgrave, and into some catacombs. And I don't know if you remember that at some point, maybe a few episodes back, I was fighting this like dog, cat, flying, teleporting thing in in a temple. Do you remember that at all? I think so, yes. Uh, not that any of the bosses in Elden Ring aren't just as weird as I described, but... Uh, anyways, I, I had gone off the map, I found this other catacomb, I went all the way to the bottom of it, and then I encountered the boss, and it was two of those, which, uh... Yeah, it, they kicked my butt. It, it was it was a no match. Um, so, I have... I, I saved it as a marker on my map, just so I know that I have to go back to it at some point, but... Yeah, that was that was kind of annoying. Where is it that this flying cat boss is at? Well, the first one. Well, yeah. The, where's the area where you encountered this thing? Well, if you look at my if you uh, look at my stream, you'll you'll see that it's this is where the new one, the the pair is. The minor Erd tree catacombs. Yeah, right next to the smoldering there. church. You can you can't miss it. I don't think I've been there before, but yeah, I've been traveling all over just trying to get room um, experience, and and so I've certainly gone through places that I didn't think that I needed to actually hit, but uh, you know, had some adventuring. It was it was nice. Well, that's not the point of Elden Ring. I mean, it's a big open world game. You're supposed to follow a linear path. Uh, I know I'm supposed to fight Market at some point. And uh, what, what level am I at this point? Let me see. Level 34. Uh, I'll try at level 35. How about that? I'm not uh, extending the flagpole here. Uh, yeah, I'm just missing. You want to go explore? That's kind of what the game is built for. <clears throat> There's a lot of dead people around here, and I didn't die recently. That's surprising. Uh, so what have you, uh, what have you been up to, John? What's uh, what have you been consuming uh, media-wise? Uh, let's see. Let me think about that, because I actually haven't been watching too much TV lately, um, unfortunately. You quit TV, is that, is, that, is that what happens? No, I think it's just that I've been sort of uh, enthralled by Wrath of the Lich King again, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, because uh, I recently reached level 80 on my first character. So you've been so, playing uh, it? Yes, yes I have. So, um, I, I know that uh, the cat the retro World of Warcrafts, I don't know what they're actually called, um, classic, classic World of Warcrafts, 
they actually interconnect like if you started playing classic world of warcraft uh, over several years ago at this point would you able to t would you be able to take those characters into the classic wrath of the lich king uh yeah so um, basically right before the launch of wrath of the lich king classic they had a period where um well actually i think all of the burning crusade servers because before wrath of the lich king classic there was the burning crusade classic and so right before the burning crusade classic ended they basically announced that all of those servers are going to be um migrating to wrath of the lich king classic uh, and so everybody on there that had their level 70s uh basically just moved to the next expansion um they didn't keep any uh they didn't keep any burning crusade servers as far as i know and they did have this sort of seasonal server for uh, vanilla wow so you know before the burning crusade which is called season of mastery uh -huh. uh, where apparently they added like a few additional mechanics and they tweaked like a few uh, they tweak like a few um, raid boss modifiers and stuff like that. I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what they did precisely. Um, those those stayed in classic mode, but I think just recently, like maybe a month ago or so, they actually started offering people to transfer their characters over to Wrath of Lich King Classic because they didn't want to have any classic servers anymore. So wait a maybe second. Maybe maybe because I'm on the outside, I, I don't quite fully understand what's happening here. But aren't you simply creating the same problem that people were asking a solution for a few years ago where they didn't have the classic servers? I mean, if you're forcing them all the way onto Wrath of the Lich King, aren't, isn't there still some small portion of the fan base that is like, I just want to play classic uh, vanilla, period? Well, yeah, that's correct, and you know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, uh, maybe I'm not saying the truth. While so, I'm are you a liar? My, is that what you're saying? Well, I'm getting my butt handed to me by Leonine. Um, no, please I, go. Please go into detail. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just getting chunk. But, uh, anyways. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not 100% sure whether or not all classic servers are gone, but um, I do know that they started offering, uh, they started telling people that were in the season of mastery servers that they were going to be migrated to the Wrath of the Lich King Classic. So that that's definitely something that happened. I don't know if there's any classic servers. I know f I, I'm 90% sure there's no more uh, Burning Crusade servers though. And so yes, you're correct. And, in, so, in some of these cases, people are being forced into what was the problem previously, where some people just want to play Classic forever, or Vanilla forever, but now they're progressing through the expansions against their will. <clears throat> it's certainly an interesting question, and like I said, I'm sure that there's only a sliver of people that fall into this category. Um, for what it's worth, and I think you know my World of Warcraft history, uh, I feel like if you were to tell me we're going to have classic servers forever at the Wrath of the Lich King stage, that would be okay because at that point, none of the actual rest of the world has officially changed by Cataclysm and everything that came afterwards, where entire areas were actually rewritten. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think that um, that totally makes sense. I mean, I guess you can make some arguments for people who really liked the balance of the older expansions like you know maybe some people really liked how paladin played in the burning crusade versus wrath of the lich king they want that like return that. of the shock in is that what you're saying yeah there's probably a group of people that were playing shock in that were unpleasantly surprised when that was in the thing in wrath of the lich king. they honored their hero static shock and blizzard just took it away from them <laughs> well, um, i know you certainly liked <laughs> Yeah, I was very, very and mildly irked by, by that change. <laughs> How dare you make me focus on my class? Uh, yeah. I, okay. Well, that that's interesting to know. So uh, I guess to to cap it, 
Are you having a good time with a WoW Classic Wrath of the Lich King? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I'm playing a Shaman right now. Uh, so it's pretty it's pretty fun to go through the heroics again. I didn't I don't think I ever really went through heroics in Wrath of the Lich King cuz I don't think I got to max level or if I did I probably did very little of like end game content. So it's fun to experience that for the first time or at least with fresher eyes. Uh I guess from your vantage point uh and and i know that <clears throat> at some point you've been playing um modern wow what is one thing that you would take from classic currently right now uh that would make the modern experience better is there anything so i haven't been playing uh modern retail well uh i thought you the last expansion that i played was back in 2016. i thought um I thought you had mentioned that you were looking forward to that um, new uh, expansion with the dragon people, was it? Yeah, Dragonflight. Yeah, yeah, Dragonflight. I, I, are you still planning on playing that? Um, so it already released and I haven't really felt the desire to switch over and really none of my friends have picked it up. So I, I, haven't, I haven't thought about playing it, honestly. I have other games on my plate, like uh, Elden, so for the time being, probably not. Understood. That makes that makes good sense. I think a lot of my friends are actually uh, more Final Fantasy XIV players, so um, you know, I, I actually got kind of bummed out because uh, a lot of them wanted to play Wrath of the Lich King Classic because they're also they they were also well players, but. They just kind of got disinterested halfway through, so we never got the end game. I mean, fair enough. People will gravitate towards the experience that they want, and I guess if they're going to be playing one massively multiplayer online RPG, then I guess they're going to go with uh, Final Fantasy XIV, which is currently enjoying it some boon of popularity. Even though, actually, I did hear a controversy about it recently. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of it, but... And this is probably a few weeks back. I heard that they were releasing some content. I, I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't know how, how often Final Fantasy XIV content gets released. It seems like it all the time. Um, but apparently the people that they... The characters or the new group that they are showing are said to be only, only like white European types or something like that. So actually, I did hear about that, but I don't think it's about Final Fantasy fourteen. I think it was actually about Final Fantasy sixteen. Oh. Um, because I think I think the same guy who directed Final Fantasy fourteen. I think they call him Yoshi P. Ah yes. He's also jo the same Joshua one. P. No, not Joshi. <laughs> Yoshi P. You're correct. Like You're Mario correct. Yoshi? Like Mario Yoshi. Um, so yeah, he's directing 16. Yes, as far as I know, he's either directing it or he's he has some very important role in that project. Um, but they were kind of... Uh, I think at least one video game reviewer was kind of putting him on blast for not having enough diversity among his characters. Um, have you seen any of the recent Final Fantasy 16 trailers? Um, no, actually, I haven't really been checking it out. I, th I thought I saw the first trailer a long time ago. I haven't really kept up with the stream of content that's been released for that one. Um, but have you? Yeah, I did watch the the latest one, um, and you know I do see the point that the reviewer makes. You know, certainly not a very diverse group of people in that trailer, not a diverse group of characters. Um, but I feel like the person who was making the review was kind of being overly critical of Yoshi P and not really understanding that. You know, okay, sure. 
Maybe this trailer didn't have enough diversity. Um, maybe this maybe this trailer didn't have enough diversity, but it is a trailer, so you don't know what other characters there might be in the final product. And on top of that, they were also trying to like insinuate that you know that this director was very close-minded and didn't really uh, you know was a little bit xenophobic and maybe you know kind of uh, walked on the line of you know being a little bit racially biased which is totally false because in final fantasy 14 there's a bunch of storylines and a bunch of characters with you know with people of color so that that aspect of you know the specific article that i read is just completely baseless and so that's kind of why i didn't really take it very serious um i don't know if that was the article that you were referencing or uh so i actually didn't read any article i i i simply uh listened to a podcast that was discussing the issue uh and i am sure that um it came out at around the similar time uh I guess I don't think that it is uh, a bad thing to point out these things. Uh, I haven't seen the trailer for myself, so I, I don't actually know. I did hear uh, from the podcast that I was listening to that... Um, what is it? That Square or Yoshi P himself had made a, a response to this uh, where the suggestion was... and. I'm, probably uh, minimizing the, the content of the response but some it was something along the lines of uh, the setting that we are basing this story on is uh, Europe some some region of Europe which was predominantly white and Anglo-Saxons uh, I don't even know if he said Anglo-Saxons but it was white people and that it that is that is part of the uh, uh, what do you call it? That is part of the aesthetic that we want to put forward in this game. Which, you know, I, I guess I could see that. I, I don't know that it is a good answer to give out. Um, but I could see that uh, at least artistic uh, idealization. Um, you know, I, I think I also read a piece of that response and, you know, um, I, I agree, it's certainly not the best response to give, um, you know, I guess his team is sort of going for a very specific, they, and from the trailer at least, they were going for a very specific aesthetic, so, I mean, if that's what they wanted to do, fine, but, you know, I, I think that, I, I think that, you know, even if that is the case, you know, it wouldn't hurt to put, you know, characters of um you know that were also you know part of minority groups or you know or were just of color in general uh, and i agree with you that you know it is worth bringing up these uh you know when you, when you sort of see these things it, it is worth bringing up i was just not a fan of the way in which it was brought up in the particular article that i had read i see <clears throat> well I, I think i think we largely agree on the point um We'll see what happens. We will see what the final game actually has. I can't imagine that it is as black and white as that. It would be very strange if it was. What are these bad people? Jeez. Golden. Old Ailes needs to defog his uh, old goggles, uh, so I will be back. Well, let me actually let me just turn off my webcam. That makes a bit more sense. Have you found any good ways to defog uh, your glasses? Because I wear glasses and they get foggy all the time whenever I wear a mask. All right, I am back. Now, how often do you uh, tune into streams where uh, streamers have goggle problems? I'm sure this is the only one. I 
I've heard that uh, if you put like shaving cream on your glasses or whatever, it stops it from uh, fogging up whenever you wear a mask. Really? Yeah. I have never heard that. Why is that? Also, wouldn't the shaving cream block your vision? <laughs> Well, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't leave your shaving cream. <laughs> you, on, just you just put a bunch of a dollop of shaving cream inside your uh, uh, goggles, and then you're like, oh, well, at least it doesn't fog up. <laughs> I mean, I guess you would keep the moisture out, but you would probably have a shaving cream blockage at that point. Well, but, I, I will. Mean, I don't know the science. I don't know the science behind it. I just know that you know people have taken their glasses, they rubbed shaving cream, they sort of polished it, and it doesn't fog up anymore. Okay. I, I'll probably try that one of these days. That sounds like, like, a, like a life hack, you know? Those uh, life hacks that you read in, uh, over the internet in certain websites. Or like, it'll say something like, bikers hate him! And it's specifically talking about the trick that you just mentioned. <laughs> All right, I don't think there's anything really interesting in this side of the world. I think I'm going to move on. So actually, last time I was playing this, what I was trying to do was trying to fight giants or trying to learn how to fight giants. Um, you know, those white guys with the swords on their backs that do like a stomp. I actually read that they're not officially giants, they're actually trolls. interpretation controls. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh it's certainly an interesting one. Um I guess before we leave the subject, are you interested in playing Final Fantasy 16 once it releases? I guess well actually do you know off the top of your head if it's coming out for PC? I can't imagine that there's a at this point a, a, a situation where it exclusively gets released for the PS5. Though, actually now, now that I think about it, it is Sony. I, I Let me look it up. <clears throat> All of these nice pieces. There's gold in them dark hills. And of course, every time we find gold, I have to say my classic catchphrase, GOLD RUSH! Is that your classic <laughs> catchphrase? Uh, I mean, classic from now on. Well, I guess you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. That's what I said, yeah. Well, it's coming out for PS5, so I don't know. Highly unlikely unless I decide to buy a PS5, which is highly unlikely. Uh, which is a shame, because it looks like such a cool game. It's actually, it seems like it's a departure from, you know, the turn-based Final Fantasies, which I, I sort of grew up with. Uh, and it looks more like a Devil May Cry game. But I kind of wanted to try it out. Uh, I don't... Like I said, I haven't really kept up with uh, content for that game, but... Uh, I did hear that the protagonist is uh, somehow related to the villain from the original Final Fantasy. Who's the original villain? Uh, you know, his name is... Uh, sorry, I'm following an old man. His name is... I can't believe I'm... Garland. Garland, yes. Mm, Garland. Who, at some point in the story, becomes 
uh, okay, spoilers for Final Fantasy 1. Garland eventually becomes Chaos. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I think that the main character uh, has his name, though I, I don't actually remember that uh, officially. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it would be interesting to see what what they actually uh, what exactly that that connection is supposed to be. Ooh, a new side of grace. I think I have found a cave. I, I mean, I have found a cave. You don't believe that you find a cave. <sighs> Out of curiosity, speaking about um, chaos, did you ever see trailers or any content for that Final Fantasy? A Stranger of Paradise game. What is... No, I think I may have heard of it. What is that? Well, let's see... Stranger of Paradise. Yeah, so it was called Stranger of Paradise, and it was an action role-playing game in the Final Fantasy series that uh, was developed by Tecmo's Team Ninja. And it was published by Square Enix in celebration of the series as... 35th anniversary um yeah and apparently it's like an action rpg uh i don't know the premise really but uh one of the things that kind of s struck out to me when i was watching the trailer was just like how how goofy some of the characters looked like some of the main characters looked and how goofy the main character was because he kept saying that he wanted to kill Chaos over and over again. Uh, and he seemed just really intense about it. It's really something that you'd have to watch the trailer to really understand. Because I'm doing a bad job at explaining it. Well, now now I'm interested. Maybe maybe we check it out. Let me, let me go to a side of grace and let's actually play it here, live, on Taproom Tales with John and Ailes. All right. You hang out back here, buddy. Okay. Let's see. Let's drag one of these guys over. All right. What is it called? Stranger of Paradise? Stranger of Paradise. I'm gonna just say trailer. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it. See, see what's up here. This came out ten months ago. Watching you risk your lives to save us made me realize something. I was wrong before. Mia and I must survive. We must become beacons of hope among the chaos that all may look to in times of doubt. What? Bravo, Jack. Just tell us about the crystals. Those who are to forge the future mustn't be concerned with trivialities. Then cut to the chase. Attachments to this world will just make it harder to do our duty. That looks like a pretty fun game. It's a mercy to forget. Yeah, it certainly is a pretty Fighting's what I live game, for. It's actually, now that I'm looking at it, it's sort Did of you defeat Tiamat? I am Sophia. Well met. All I know now is that makes me wonder I want to see this through to the end. Which Beat makes us warriors of light, like in the prophecy. I know you don't want to hear this. Then don't say it. No can do. This one's not like the rest. I think this one isn't the trailer where he starts going, you know, I will kill chaos. No, that's uh that's okay. I honestly had uh, just a sinking interest to see what this was about because like I said I had heard about it. I didn't know that it wasn't a square Enix game. If you want to see the one where he starts saying I'm going to kill Chaos, it's the announcement. Where did I come from? 
think we're strangers. Okay. Jack Garland. Wait a second. Maybe the game that I'm talking about I'm is this. Here. His name is Jack Garland. Before long. Just like um, the me. main enemy in uh, Final Fantasy Sarah, 1. I, I'd like you to have this. Maybe I wasn't talking but about Final Fantasy 16 at all then. I wonder why our viewers didn't correct me. You'll just forget. I on won't. Viewers, come on, chat. <laughs> chat, what are you doing? Why should some post a bunch of just pictures of sad frogs now? Yeah. What have I done? Okay, well, I, I think I think we've seen enough of this trailer. That it runs actually for quite quite long. Um, yeah, so maybe that's that's what I was talking about. Considering that uh, his name is Jack Garland, and you are suggesting that he wants to fight chaos. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we go back to the question: I wonder how it connects to the original Final Fantasy. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just like a spin-off. It's actually a prequel. It was a prequel all along. Prequel? No, a prequel of what? It's a good... It was actually Final Fantasy Zero. Or Final Fantasy Type Zero. That's what that was. Uh, so are you planning on playing that one? Uh, is that one... <laughs> Out on the PC. I, I think it is actually. Probably. Yeah, quick Google search does say Windows, so I guess if I do see it on sale, I might pick it up. Now, unfortunately, that Steam Autumn sale just finished. I was Did you actually. Pick up anything good? No, actually, today was the first day that I could go into my email and then just look at stuff and one of the things that of course said uh, steam sale going on right now and uh, I go to steam because one of the things that they listed for me was King of Fighters 15 that excellent fighting game and so I was going to pick it up because it was 50% off but I, I realized that I guess the steam sale ended like the last day of, of uh, November well, that's a shame yeah so I'm sure there will be some other time to uh, pick up King of Fighters 15. I'm sure to play it at some point in my life. Okay, Are so you more of a King of Fighters player or a Street Fighter player? I, I think I like King of Fighters more, but I am more familiar with Street Fighter mechanics. Mm -hmm. All that being said, I am amateurish at both. Uh, so I have this chest in front of me. Several things that uh, players leave suggest that it is the, the ground is going to crumble beneath me and I can already see that there's cracks on the floor. Is there any way that I can actually get to the chest without triggering that? I don't know. I don't think I've encountered that before. Um, let me look at your screen and see what kind of chest I guess the hole is on this side. Maybe if I go through here. Cause you, can you see that? Yeah, I do see it. Um, I'm going to walk around see what happens. Maybe they're faking you out. Maybe they're just trying to keep you away from very good loot. All right. Pickled turtle neck. That was my reward. <laughs> Great. Oh. And some cave moss. Some cave moss. Well, you think that was the inspiration for cave moss? Cave moss. There's no doubt in my mind that that was part of it, part of the equation. When cave moss's parents were thinking about naming their children, they were like, "Well, we're both." Uh, experienced spelunkers what is what is a way to honor our craft and let it live with our daughter <laughs> i guess i didn't know that piece of trivia about kate moss i didn't know she was the daughter of two highly uh, acclaimed seasoned spelunkers yeah 
back when you still needed a license to be one. Took on that uh, spelunking uh, field test. Okay, well I got the thing. I, I don't think there's any point in me triggering that hole. Um, so I'm going to simply avoid it and walk away with my pickled turtleneck. Did you defeat uh, Leonidas? Uh, or, no, I did. Sorry, not Leonidas. Le Leonine. No, he's uh, certainly been a pain in my back. So, no, I haven't. Like I said, he does have that uh, Margit style fighting style. Where it's the slashes, unpredictable slashes. Um, jumping overwhelming slashes kind of thing yeah just something that you have to learn I feel learn what to dodge the process he's just talking about the autumn sale uh, and more broadly about Black Friday and Cyber Monday did you pick up anything during those days anything nice I did not. Uh, not at all. Well, I did. I what actually did got get? myself a new, a new graphics card. Oh, okay. Um, did, did what you have prove dissatisfactory? Yeah, because uh, I couldn't run stuff like Elden Ring in max settings. But now I should be able to do so pretty nicely. And on top of that, I should be able to play other games in max settings, like uh, the new Call of Duty game, which is pretty cool. Been wanting to play that. What um, what are the specs on this new graphics card? I I ask as if I know about graphics card <laughs> specs. Well, you know, a as you are aware, I you know, I am an my expert. previous. My previous graphics card had 300 teraflops. This one has 3,000, so you know. Uh, and it also has more gigahertz. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I oh, mean, I, I actually wasn't going to question any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are terms that are graphics card related, and teraflops specifically is something that you know if you've ever kind of, if you've ever been curious about some of the uh, technical conferences that like PlayStation and Xbox have had they actually do tout they they do tout those uh, those terminologies for like their graphics computing units um, and so they do mean something for like PC graphics cards but you know I I definitely don't know them off the top of my head and you know they don't really mean anything to the, to the lay person so. I, I, I can just tell you that it's better and it's good for uh, it's good for playing every single game uh, at max settings every single game that can run in HD resolution it's not good enough for 4k though it could probably run like Elden Ring at medium settings at 4k but I don't have a 4k TV so that's not really my problem gotcha well, I am glad that you were able to uh, pick that up. Uh, what is the percentage, or how much did you save because it was Black Friday? Um, so apparently they said that the card went retail for like 500 and something dollars, like almost $600 plus tax. Mm -hmm. uh, they lowered it to like 369 so like $370. But then there was an additional uh, promo code which reduced it by up to like three hundred and fifteen dollars before taxes. So after taxes, I paid like three hundred and fifty dollars, which was a pretty good deal. Nice, nice. Uh, you certainly save a a good piece of scratch there, as a uh, as those horse jockeys will say. So those horse jockeys. All right, I think I found the. An encampment of some sort. But I may have already been here. No, I think I've already been here. Never mind. Never mind, false alarm. 
What time are we at? All right, I am going to go get uh, something to wet my whistle, so uh, we shall be right back. just needed to find something from the fridge and actually let me go ahead and kill the audio on Elden Ring so we can actually have a a heart-to-heart -heart, if you will that's not what I meant to do uh, you know I, I sure wish there was a simple quick way to actually shut down my the volume on this thing Ah yes, so I decided to go get something to drink, um, first drink of the day, so decided to go with something a little clear or well, lighter, though I, I can't say that a hazy double IPA necessarily is the lightest thing in the world. Uh, this one, you can see that, is a first responder, uh, a hazy double IPA from our friends at Oakland United Beer Works which has quickly become one of my favorite craft breweries uh, in recent times. Uh, this was one of those instances where the can itself actually made me want to get it. Uh, I think I'm a fool whenever I see interesting can artwork on, on beer that uh, I, I see it and I, I must have it. Uh, the person being depicted here is a, some sort of a... What, what do you call an or What do you call a person in a hospital uh, are you actually seeing this, John? Yeah, I just saw the stream right now. Is that like a nurse? Or... Yeah, I, I guess it's a nurse. I was gonna say an orderly. Is that is that a medical way? Is that a medical person in general? Uh, 
Well, that sounds right, but uh, I'm, I definitely don't know any medical terminology. Yeah, so they have a, they have in their hand what's, what do you call it, a caduceus, seduceus? Uh, I don't know what okay, you call it. I believe you said it right the first. Okay, a caduceus. Uh, you know, just like the Boston Celtics. And then they have wings on their talons and on their cap. Uh, and I saw, I thought, well, how does this relate in any sort of way to a nurse or what have you? Uh, and I don't know that I found my answer. I actually haven't had it uh, as Aelwolf, but I have had it um, in real life. Let's see what Untap has to say on the matter. And of course, here, here I go into my usual spiel of hazy IPAs are not really like uh, conventional uh, IPAs. They don't have any of that bitterness that West Coast IPAs generally have. They're, um, they're hazy, they're cloudy, simply because of the fact that the yeast does not get filtered out when bottling or canning as, as it is here. And uh, the hop content that you would generally have here is actually added during the fermentation process as opposed to the boiling process, which allows the hops to only bestow aromatic and flavor notes as opposed to bittery notes. Let's go ahead and open this. <clears throat> You would think that I haven't said that 10 million times in, on this stream. Um, and that is the only reason why I know it so well. Let's go ahead and pour this one. All right, so as you can see on camera, yeah, that is totally cloudy. It is uh, lighter in color. Uh, in terms of what Untapped has to say on this issue, let me go to would it be, be right back alternate? No, live scene alternate. There we go. So, our tribute to the first responders keeping our community safe. This hazy double IPA is filled with aromas of grapefruit, lemon, guava, and pineapple with a subtle bitterness, medium body, and moderate carbonation. So I guess to answer my own question, it's not supposed to taste like a first responder. It's actually dedicated to first responders. Imagine that, uh, you know, I guess my face is red now. Uh, the first responder taste? Yeah, you know, uh, tired, sweaty, uh, really wants to help people out, but they're like in an uncomfortable spot. They don't have enough resources. Uh, much. Uh, so it does have a guava, Quava like uh, aroma on the nose, so that's that's nice. Uh, let's see what this is. Fang and ale. Definitely test, taste some notes of lemon. Mm. The pineapple flavor is a little more round. It rounds out the the palate there. It's very rich. Um, I don't taste any bitterness, which is nice. Yeah, so they, I mean a tropical package overall. Uh, like I said, the pineapple is a little round and it's it's fleshy. Uh, the lemon is only in the background. It is where I would expect the bitterness to be, but it is not. And then really the guava itself is mostly in the bouquet of the of the drink. Uh, certainly medium body as you would expect for most hazy IPAs. <sighs> very good, very good. I like it to our first responders, as they say. Though I think the, the better thing here would have been to simply, uh, for this uh, crap brewery to uh, give first responders this beer and for free, that would have been nice, right? I agree. Uh, I, guess, I guess you can't give everybody a free beer. Get pretty expensive in this economy. I, I guess you can't really there's I I, he, I make the assumption that everyone drinks and a lot of people just don't drink so that there is that particular issue and let me go ahead and update my ticker here just in case anyone pops in midstream they're wondering hey what is what is old ales drinking right now I gotta know but I don't want to ask them on chat I just want to lurk So I think that is that. Let's let's go back to the show. 
bit. And actually, let's go ahead and turn on the music here. Uh, and let's go back to... Oh, wait a second. <clears throat> I gotta back, go back into the menu and turn my audio back on. Nice. So, going back to just going ons of the going on of life, I, I did happen to catch a couple more episodes of season three of Better Call Saul. I think maybe I'm up to episode three at this point. I like the fact that most of these episodes have actually focused a little bit more on, um, what's his name, uh, Mike, Mike's, Mike's side of the story. Do you remember where he is at at this point, John? I, I know that you finished, uh, finished your show, but uh, at season three, uh, essentially it's when he first meets uh, Gus. So yes, how do you feel about the reveal that Gus is back? I guess you knew that he was back, but uh, you know, I guess this is the first time that it actually got revealed to you. To be perfectly honest with you, <clears throat> I had heard that some cast members were c going to be in Better Call Saul, and I'm sure I know that Gus's actor's name was on the list, but I had no idea in terms of the chronology as to when that was going to happen or if it was going to be a one-off type situation. So uh, yeah, I was I'm com I was completely taken aback by the fact that uh, he is the one that stopped uh, Mike from killing uh, what's his name Hector. Yes. Ah, I really dislike that guy. By the way, <laughs> just With really Hector? Dis yeah, I just dislike him. What do you mean? I think the writers did a good job at, you know, humanizing Hector, you know, and showing all of his good qualities and, you know, how much of a family man he is. I'm, I'm joking. Right? Okay. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I mean, back in Breaking Bad, he was just this crippled old man stuck into a chair. Um, so you had some sympathy from that perspective, I thought, maybe just a little bit. Of course... You did have a few flashbacks in Breaking Bad where you saw how terrible of a person he was. But uh, in this season, yeah, he's just, he's pretty irredeemable, I want to say. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a rascal. You know, and it, it was it was pretty interesting the way that, that they framed it so that Gus is actually the one that didn't want to kill Hector. And it, it didn't end up being much. I think that was a good, good move. Um, writing ones. You know, all that being said, I, I did find that the way that he went about stopping Mike from killing him was a little bit roundabout. I, I feel like maybe he could have just sat down with him and explained the situation, but instead he was just very cryptic and decided to leave him a note the moment before he was going to kill him. Also, the note didn't really explain too much other than say don't. <laughs> well, I think uh, that's kind of the way that Gus operates. Right? You know, he's, he's a very paranoid individual. So, uh, you know, at that point, he, di he didn't, hasn't formally introduced, well, at least at the point where he stopped Mike, he wasn't introduced to Mike yet, right? No. Uh, here's, uh, here's me playing devil's advocate, but after that reveal, I thought that part of the reason why they did that is maybe at some... Maybe there was a point during the uh, development of Better Call Saul where that wasn't the way that they, go they were going to go. And so they decided to make it completely vague uh, as to who this person was just so that they could uh, solidify their plans by Season 3 and make that reveal. Uh, maybe maybe that's just me playing fourth dimensional chess, but that's I feel like that could have been something that might have happened there. I, it, that's a reasonable assessment because I think they do that all the time in in TV shows. Like I'm pretty sure, like um, you know, in at least in the show that I've been watching, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, I'm sure that 
they've left certain threads, you know, they, they've left certain threads in such a way where, you know, they could, like, bring in other characters or, you know, make other characters guilty of, you know, certain things. So I, I think that's definitely a fair assertion that that's possibly what they did there. It's not unheard of. I, I do suppose that, uh, you do make a point though that Gus does does operate in a certain way where he doesn't really want to leave any uh, trails behind, and so he may he, it does make sense for him to have wanted to be completely anonymous with the situation, maybe scare off Mike. Period, not have any follow up. Uh, this just know that he is being watched. Um, right. So I, I guess I could see it that way. Oh, I found a mine. With an old elevator. Morn Tunnel. I don't think I've ever been here. Uh, yeah, so he is revealed. And, and, and again, it's, it's very convoluted what happens because... Uh, Oh, new side of grace, excellent. So what happens is uh, he tracks, he backtracks the, uh, I guess, uh, GPS thing that uh, they installed in his car. And um, <clears throat> he eventually goes and, and finds the person that puts these GPS devices, which leads him to Los Pollos Hermanos, which, you know classic uh classic location from breaking bad <coughs> excuse me <coughs> ah. so he speaks with him at last, he tells him what's what's up. The reason why he doesn't want to kill him is because he wants to kill him at a later time. Which, unfortunately, uh, we know how that ends up. <laughs> but, um... Essentially... Mike starts helping... Uh, Gus by uh, interfering with uh, Hector's uh, delivery of uh, drugs across the state mm -hmm. and actually I don't know how committed he is because I've only seen up to episode 3 like I know he did it he definitely has done it twice but it almost seems like he wants to also back out of it uh, so I don't know if he's going to keep doing this or how that uh, relationship is going to continue. And then the last thing I saw was uh, that Hector went up to Gus after his uh, supply line was interrupted and he said, hey, you are going to transport my stuff because uh, my line has been compromised. I, I don't know if he's actually going to do that, but it certainly seems like uh, Gus is somehow has a has a plan to not do this. But you haven't finished episode three, right? Uh, I think I may have finished it. Did you watch the part where um, Mike uh, puts the shoes on top of the like electric line and then he? Yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, I think that was part of episode two, and I think they may have shown this information like out of order, um, which is why I'm a little bit confused by that. But uh, yeah, what? so he makes it so that the shoes, he shoots the shoes, and then the shoes actually uh, had, uh, I guess, some sort of drug, which makes yeah. it possible for the dogs to sniff it out. The uh, which is what interrupts the supply line in the first place. Yeah, I thought that that scene was good because it still showed... Because, you know, at least if you had watched Breaking Bad before, when Mike usually picks up a gun, it's to kill somebody. But here, 
you know, at least when I first watched the episode, I was like, all right, is this it? Is this the episode where Mike finally kills somebody? Uh, and he didn't, right? You know, you saw him like aiming down his sights at the cartel people. You know, you thought he was going to shoot them, kill them to disrupt Hector, but he didn't. Which is just another, another, uh, another reason why I kind of praise, you know, the writing of both Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould because uh, it's 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 incredible how they've managed to make Mike get away with not really killing anybody yet, and it just kind of uh, it reinforces the fact that he's very very reluctant to take a life again. Yeah. <clears throat> It's certainly, the intent is certainly there, but he, I don't know that he, unless he's push comes to shove that he will actually commit to it. And I'm sure that they are saving that for a very particular moment. If, if they are saving that. So how do you, how do you feel so far? Do you, do you, have you liked the first three episodes? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, really the mystery is unfolding. On, on the other side of the equation, though, we have uh, Jimmy, who is having to deal with his brother's uh, little tape recorder, where, <laughs> like, he somehow makes it so that uh, Jimmy learns about this, and then he storms into his house, and of course in his house he had, like, a, this old-timey detective just ha hiding out, waiting for him to do this. <laughs> uh, which I thought, what the, what, why, this is so dumb, just install a camera, uh, of course you can't install a camera, but it's so dumb, uh, it's like this mu mustache twirling detective, I don't know, like, Poirot or something like that, and, um, yeah, of course he goes into his house to try to get the tape, and call out Chuck, uh, that could, it would have been, I kind of just hated seeing that because he essentially fell right into his trap and, and I was just annoyed by that. Uh, but then instead of instead of making it so that he goes to jail, which is something that I guess could happen, uh, the thing that happens is he has him enter this plea where he is going to give up his license because that is what Chuck wants in his... Uh, in his ultimate wisdom of things, he just doesn't want Jimmy to be part of the law. Uh, and I, I find it frustrating that he pretends that he likes his brother, or, or maybe he does, he just wants him to stay off his court. Uh, I, I don't know how to interpret his desire, but he just doesn't want him to come out of this unscathed doing uh, practicing law. Yeah. Chuck is certainly being a little rascal. He's definitely put Jimmy in a corner. Um, I will say that this season has probably one of the best scenes with, with Chuck. So uh, keep your eyes peeled because I think if you're on episode three, it's actually it's actually within the next few episodes. Okay. Does he? Does he? Does somebody? Does Mike just kill him? <laughs> Are we gonna combine <laughs> the two important things like Mike taking a life and uh, Chuck getting it, getting his comeuppance, and it's actually Mike just kills him? Oh, I think uh, I think you may have put it together. I think you you have preempted the genius writing of Peter Gold. It's <laughs> like, hey, let's let's, let's unite these two scenarios. What do people really want to see? <laughs> well, people want to see Mike break bad and. People also want to see Chuck dead, so, you know, yeah. one plus one equals two. So right now at the end of ep uh, episode three, uh, they had this initial court hearing. And uh, his, uh, what is her name? The, the other lawyer who is helping out uh, Jimmy. I forget. Kim? Yes, yeah, so Kim has a talks to um, Chuck and Ken, uh, what's his name? The other guy from HH&M. Howard? Yeah, I just, I, I, I always think of, I always think of calling him Ken because he essentially just looks like a Ken doll. <laughs> yes. um, <clears throat> but she says something like, oh, I know that you guys have another tape or whatever. 
and they exchange a couple more lines and then she finally meets uh, Jimmy outside and she's like got him and clearly something some pa- some information was passed during that conversation that I'm not aware of how it, it will change the tables but I'm assuming it will yeah I can't say I specifically remember the, the specifics of that situation but uh, they do I, I think that um, you'll be pretty surprised how many aces Jimmy and Kim have up here since. By the way, I am a little bit offended that you didn't remember Kim's name because she's great. I uh, no, I, I I absolutely think that she is an amazing. She's doing an amazing job with her role. They're just the duality of not of trying to support uh, Jimmy while at the same time knowing that he's not really playing it straight. But of course, there's this side to Kim where she also wants to uh, be sleek every once in a while. Uh, so, so yes, all my praise goes to Kim. I, I, I do like her very much. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how they're going to turn the tables there, but clearly something is going to happen. Yeah, so that's uh, that's where I am at. Uh, can't wait to see what happens next. Notice that every single time I jump in, I get him, he staggers a bit, and I've actually been able to jump in him three times, and he like kneels over. So I think that's probably the strategy, and I've actually got him down to like 20%. So keep hammering it home. To be perfectly honest with you, the time that I killed him, I feel like I just made a very lucky set of like dodge rolls and counters. Uh, I I don't really remember what my strategy was. Ah, great. I died in a very stupid way, of course, as I tend to do. Uh, other than that, I did... Um finished the god of high school a couple of weeks ago i don't know if i mentioned to you that i was watching that you did mention it um i think you, i think we had a discussion last time where you said uh that it does feel a little bit more uh style over substance yeah and i think that that kept going through through the show i think that my main so i like i like the content i i really like the way that the battles the hand-to-hand -hand combat was actually depicted very fluid animation so if, if that's your sort of thing i would certainly watch it but i i will say that one thing that made me uh a little bit concerned uh not concerned but i feel like um in this show you could have expanded upon some of the plot points that uh they were presenting and because of the episode count, you actually didn't do that. Uh, like, I feel like you could have done a lot to... Uh, so I feel like they skipped over a lot of backstory and they kept introducing characters even though they were significant to the story they only got a couple of flashbacks and there was really no time to develop these characters they simply showed up had a quick five minute thing about how they were related to the story and then it's like oh by the way I have uh, super summoning powers or I can throw key blasts um, 
And that is that is actually also one thing that I thought, eh, you know, I, I've seen this before. In the sense that the show really clearly started out wanting to depict a tournament, a hand-to-hand combat tournament, which which was awesome, and I like the way that they depicted the different fighting styles. But at some point, it just became like uh, uh, this sort of key blast sort of thing, where they would summon creatures or stands, and and they would just fight that way. Which, you know, I I, I think I've seen enough of that. I, I think it's fine. It's it's delightful to see it, but. I feel I felt going into the show I expected something and I got something else. Well, that's kind of disappointing. Uh, and I, I so I guess even though I haven't seen that show specifically, I do know what you're talking about. You know about um, how they sort of how sometimes shows or movies kind of resort to these uh, combat tropes like you know key blast or like the beam struggle. Uh, and I say the beam struggle specifically because uh, every time I think of the beam struggle, I think of specifically one scene in like I think the first or second Hobbit movie, where they have like Gandalf and like I don't know if it was like a a ring wraith or it was like a necromancer or maybe it was Sauron, but they literally have him like shoot magic from his staff against this thing, and I just thought it was like the most <coughs> over the top, out of place thing for Gandalf to do and it just stood out to me I was like what the, what the heck is going on here yeah yeah so it, it was some of that so I, I enjoyed myself because of the way in which the show was paced I didn't really get to connect with anybody other than like the main couple of characters uh, the protagonist and his companions uh, and unfortunately they they are not in the spotlight at, during like the second half of the show. They introduce this whole set of other characters, and and again they're relevant to the story, but they're not really introduced, or th- their introduction has no time to breathe. Um, and I think that they are, were suggesting that there might be a season two because one of the characters went missing, the protagonist's grandfather, who is a master, of course, of all these martial arts. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah, so I, I would say catch it if you want to watch some cool martial arts tournament style type of things. But uh, if you if you want to learn about who the people being shown are, I, I would say focus on watching the show as opposed to me who was like eating and trying to catch it like by fifteen minute uh, uh, breaks. Actually, talking about anime, uh, didn't that uh, Bleach continuation start up again? Uh, you know, I know that it was coming. I don't know exactly when it's supposed to happen. Um, but I am very excited about it. I really want to see it. I do feel like I need to get a refresher on all things Bleach at some point. Yeah, I, I I saw a trailer of it because you know I haven't I haven't actually watched it. I don't know if there's actually enough to sort it out now. I'm actually gonna search that up now because now I'm kind of interested. But uh, I was surprised in the trailer that it seems like they retained a lot of the same art style that they did from the 2000s show. Because yeah, 2000s probably is when that show was there. Uh, yeah, I was surprised how they kept the art style because usually when you have like, you know, uh, restarts or reboots, they change it up. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. If you catch it, if you see that it's being airing, maybe we should uh, both start watching it. So here it says Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Episode 8 is out on December 5th at 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Hulu. Uh, ah, so yeah, it looks cool. like there's eight episodes. Eight episodes. Or seven. So it's been happening, huh? Yep. Yeah, episode one happened on October tenth. Gotcha. <clears throat> well, that's cool. I'll have to. I'll have to check that out. I'll. I'll probably have to sign up to Hulu because that is that is one service I do not have.
was a goofy collaboration between Bleach and another, and like a fast food place. I forget which one it was. I think it was Bleach and Pizza Hut or something like that. Oh, uh, recently? Yeah, recently, because of this show. Oh no, it was actually with Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola Zero Soul Blast action flavor. It looks kind of... I don't know what soul blast it is. Seems like I got a pickaxe from one of these miners. What happened to the good old days when all miners were just kobolds? Was that the good old days? The good old days. The dead mines, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you can actually play the dead mines as you remember it right now. Yeah, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Would it be more work than Final Fantasy XIV, though? Yeah, uh, that's an interesting question to ponder. I wonder how deep this tunnel goes, jeez. So, um... What's it called? Uh, I was gonna say I did one watch one other piece of anime recently, and that was uh, I started. I picked up One Piece once again. Uh, now please don't yawn or like say, "Oh come on, what are you doing?" Um, I actually, so I, I, if you will recall, I was actually watching it a couple months ago. Then I stopped to watch other anime, uh, and I've officially started the post time skip arc uh, and I actually posted it on Twitter originally this thing aired uh, in 20 what is it uh, I thought it was like 2011 or something like October of 2011 so it's been over a decade since the time skip actually happened and I am only watching it now wow. so uh, all that being said I, I, I don't know if I'll actually finish this show within my lifetime <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so when did you start watching the One Piece? When specific? Uh, I think it was like four years ago. Uh, and, and as you know, I, I tend to pace myself with these things. <clears throat> I really okay, don't so... watch too much beyond uh, an episode or so. Uh, maybe like a when week. One Piece. But when did it start like airing in? Well, when did it start airing in US? Like this stuff. Why not? I mean, apparently it started in Japan in 1999. So. Okay, let's just ballpark it, okay? Let's just say that One Piece started airing in the United States around, like, 2005. So, okay. 2005, uh, you know, you said that you started watching it four years ago, 2018. Uh, let's see. So, from 2005 to 2011, that's six years of content that you watched in the span of four years... So you're watching six years of contents every every four years. So, gosh, I don't know how much content One Piece actually has. Well, it's still ongoing. That's I think that's part of my uh, concern at this point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't actually know how long One Piece has, but I if I keep at this pace, that I don't doubt that I will continue watching it for at least another five years if it were to somehow end right now. <laughs> well, 
sure you still have a lot of time. Uh, I know that if I were to start, I'd probably take forever. Unless I started binging it and made my life like this, which honestly doesn't seem like a very fun idea to me. I wonder if at this point One Piece has more episodes than Dragon Ball. More episodes than what? Dragon Ball. I, I'm pretty sure it probably does. That's... There's no doubt in my mind that that's the case. <laughs> so did you? Uh... So I actually beat. I actually beat him. Oh, okay, nice. How'd you feel? Um, annoyed. He was an annoying boss, but I did it. Yeah, that's true. Did you get the claymore, uh, the sword, special sword? Yes, I did. I'm actually gonna try it out now. Well, good luck. So, remember how I was telling you that one of my goals with beating that boss was actually getting that great sword? Because I wanted to use it to beat Margit? Yes. It's not actually a great sword, it's a colossal sword. So its weight <sighs> class is off the charts. I literally have to be completely naked to hold it. <laughs> yeah, this thing is pretty heavy. Uh, so while I would love to take it into battle against Margit, uh, I'm going to say that it is not likely going to happen unless I raise another 10 levels or so. I think you should give Margit another try because, uh, I don't know, I feel like that Leonine guy was pretty tough. So if I was able to beat Margit and find the Leonine tough, then you should probably be able to beat Margit because you beat Leonine. Yeah, there's there's a there's a chance of that, and and I might I might actually do that, uh, but not today, unfortunately, because we actually have to wrap up in the next couple minutes. Um, yeah, so just just to end with the One Piece thing, uh, pretty excited. Uh, it was honestly at this point watching One Piece is like comfort food, because I was trying to see oh what should I watch next since I had just finished God of High School and I'm like what. There's so many things on my list, and I was just like, you know what, I, I just want to pick something easy. I don't want to think think too much, <laughs> uh, which is a good and a bad thing, but uh, maybe I'll watch uh, one season, and then I'll jump into something else. I think uh, we were actually talking about potentially starting um, Chainsaw Man, um, so maybe we can, we can do that together. Yeah, we could. That would be a fun show to check out. Um... And I, I was, it's kind of funny the, the way that you phrased, uh, you know, the fact that you kind of went back to One Piece after watching The God of High School. I think it's kind of like, you know, maybe earlier in the day you had like Korean barbecue with like some family, but then like at the end of the day you're like, all right, I, I don't want to cook, I'm just going to get some McDonald's. I think it's funny that you mentioned that because God of High School is actually Korean. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's, uh, it started as a Korean and a, a manga, whatever the equivalent of a manga is. Um, so I, I think that was a very apt comparison right there. Wow. Yeah, so, so good, good job on that. Uh, let me go ahead and turn off the sound on this thing so we can actually do the goodbyes. All right, so uh, let's go. Well, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, uh, John. Any any parting words, anything for our listeners, viewers, uh, before uh, for the long weekend before next week? Uh, stay safe. Have a good weekend and uh, eat some Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue is delightful. Uh, I certainly love it. Um, that's that's good advice. 
yeah hopefully you guys had some fun hopefully you were able to connect with some of the topics here in the uh, taproom tales with uh, john and nails a block of the stream i will actually be back later tonight streaming super metroid um so if you are looking for some late night retro uh you'll know where to where to find it um but otherwise uh uh, we will come back at this time, ideally next week, Friday, for some more tales. Um, like John suggests, do stay safe, take care of yourself. Uh, yeah, and uh, stay thirsty, Wolfkin. We'll see you again.